Y. And here's another go live button. That's not supposed to happen when I'm set up this way. So now I think that is about to start running. Y. There it is. And there's yes. another go live sound too. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're on. <laughs> So let's let me switch things around here a little bit and switch over and bring Stan up on the screen. And there he is. Hi, Stan. Hi, Doug. All right. So I see your 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 name in the bottom left corner on my screen says Meandering Man at seventy. Did you change your name legally? Uh, not yet, no. But it is legal on YouTube. <laughs> if you want to see what I'm doing every Wednesday, I. I set out a video. Sometimes it happens on Thursday because I'm too busy. But on YouTube, I'm Meandering Man at 70. If you want to look me up and look at my videos, there I am. So meandering, I guess this means you go outside of your house and you kind of walk around and have just random patterns on your front lawn. Is that what well, that means? Well, yeah, I've had three neighbors already turn me into the police and they've sent out some... Uh, some uh, um, some uh, ambulances to see if I need to go to the house. Oh, okay. Not my house. That are talking about the other house. In a straight jacket? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm teasing. All right. So meandering really means you're meandering around the country. Exactly. Yeah. In van life. Yep. All, All right. right. I don't know if this is going to show, Doug, but uh, yeah. I don't know if this is going to show, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, I bet this is your business card. There's one of my business cards. <laughs> yeah. Meandering Man at 70, and I'm meandering throughout uh, the 48 states of the USA. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we see the actual the outline of the country and the states there. Yeah. Along with your van, I think. Yep. It's my van, and it also has uh, um, Rose and Pete. Rose, yeah. Rose is a oh, black, yeah. is a black bear, and Pete is a, a dragon. Pete the dragon. All right. And they came from some of my grandkids, which means they're coming along with me. Okay, great. So our task today, you said you, you, you told me something along the lines of wanting to use an external hard drive. So that you have access to your files when you're away from a connection to OneDrive? Yes, and that's that's the internet or OneDrive. And this is the hard drive I want to try and get connected up to my computer today. And it has this kind of cable that right. connects somehow. So what you actually have there is an is a uh, SSD drive, uh -huh. the uh, two and a half inch that could be used inside of a laptop. Mm -hmm. And then you have an adapter. Yeah. To connect it. Show us on the on the solid state drive, show us the connectors. The edge connectors. Yeah. Some let's people see. will recognize that. Yeah, hold it still for a little bit. Hold it still. There you go. Right there. Yeah. Some people recognize that as a SSD drive that can plug uh, into a laptop computer. Actually be installed inside the computer. Ah, okay. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the exactly the, the kind of drive that's inside your laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's probably a different brand. Yeah, it could be. What size is that? It's uh, 500, uh, I think it's 500, uh, yeah, 500 gigabyte. Yeah. It's on the back here. If I can get it focused in right, you see it right up here on the top. Yeah. It says 500 gigabyte. All right, very good. Which another 500 gigabyte would put me to a terabyte, wouldn't it? Yes. Okay. So that adapter that you have, one end of it will connect to the SSD drive and the other plugs into a USB port. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the tongue in that USB connection where it connects to the laptop, is okay. it, does it colored? Yeah, it's blue. Yep. Yeah. Is it blue? Yeah, it's blue. Yeah, okay. It's blue. I can't so, see color on my computer for some reason, but... That indicates that ideally it should be connected to a USB 3.0 or higher port mm -hmm. on your computer, but it will work on a USB 2.0 port. <coughs> do I have a 3.0 on this one? Yeah. Are any of your USB ports on the laptop have a color? It's 
could be a blue, it could be red, it could be, what's another one they use, yellow sometimes. Both, both of these on the left look like they're gray. The one on the, is there one on the right? I can't tell. I have a mouse in one of them. Maybe it's in the wrong. Let's now see. That, that laptop might not have any USB ports. Let's see if that's USB two. Yeah, no, I I think that's a that's a brown one too, or gray brown uh, brown okay. one too. So I don't think I have any colored ports. So we're not going to care which port you plug that into. Okay. So let's switch over to your computer and have a look at some things. So I'm going to uh, do a couple clicks here to get us set up for that. And there, that one responded. And over here, I'll push that button. There we go. So before you plug that in, I'm going to get a little reacquainted with your computer. I'm going to open Windows Explorer by clicking on the Manila envelope on your taskbar. And then maximize that window. And here's the C drive. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to right click again like I really mean it this time. <laughs> and then <laughs> properties. So the drive that's in your computer now is one terabyte, and it's this number typically shows a little bit below uh, one terabyte, but that's just the way calculations go. And right over here, we do see that is in the trillions position or terabyte yeah. position. Okay. Okay. So then I'm gonna cancel that, and then I want to go take a look. It's let's do Windows key R. MS Info 32, coincidentally, that's the last thing that was done on this computer. It's already there. I'll just press enter. This is going to show me some information about the computer. It's an HP Pavilion G7. You've got Windows 10 Home. It's an Intel i3 at 2.4 gigahertz. What else in here am I interested in? 8 gigabytes of RAM memory. And then let's come over here to hardware resources. No, that's not what I want. I want components. And then come down to storage, expand that section, and then click on disks. And right here, this shows us that it's a SPC solid state disk. So that's the confirmation that it's an SSD. And the SP, what was that? Something Pacific, I think. I almost thought of the brand, the brand name. Mm, yeah, I'm not thinking of it right now. It's okay. So it's uh, here again. We're seeing one terabyte. All right. And then another piece of information. I believe you have OneDrive already active. Come down here to your OneDrive icon. It says up to date. Right click on that see where we're sitting with that and try that again there we go. it disappeared on me How come? It, me too there it is okay and then settings so this shows us that you're using 700 735 kilobytes of five gigabytes so okay. to think through that storage, five gigabytes, that's five billion. And the K is thousand. So you're less than one megabyte here. So you've got tons of free storage available on your OneDrive cloud. Okay. Um, let's go look and see on the backup tab and manage backup. This gives us confirmation that your everything on your desktop and in your documents folder and your pictures folder, those are all being, wait a minute, manage back, start back. Yeah, they're check marked. Yeah. So they're already being backed up. Space left in OneDrive after selection. 
Um, space left in OneDrive after selection. That's thrown me for a loop. What? Wait a minute. Let me go back. Did I did I say these numbers right? Here's your account. Five gigabytes. Cloud storage. That's 13 gigabytes. 13 gigabytes is more than five gigabytes. Yeah. Wait a minute. What's going on for, here? For documents? I don't have that many documents on this computer, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. How? What is what is going on here? This does not making sense. Your total space in OneDrive is five gigabytes, and your documents and pictures each are more than that. We don't have a start backup. These are space left. Oh no, you're not. You're not being backed up. These are not being backed up. Oh, I see you. The I I when when we came into here, I'm accustomed to to not seeing check marks here, but because the start backup was grayed out, that's what put my mind into the mindset that you're already backing up because the start backup button was gray but uh -huh. it's gray because there's not enough space in your onedrive account for all this stuff so if i remove this check mark and remove this check mark there you go now there is enough room in onedrive for your desktop and we have a start backup button so no your stuff is not being backed up to onedrive which actually kind of relieves another concern I had because I was thinking about when you're out meandering around, you oftentimes are going to be um, connecting to the internet through your cell phone. And yeah. if OneDrive was taking up a lot of your bandwidth through your cell phone to synchronize, that would be chewing up a lot of your bandwidth. Um, through your cell phone internet and we don't want that so that kind of puts a little different slant on what we're what we're about to do so all of that stuff that's on your computer is not being backed up to onedrive so we looked earlier at your uh onedrive account settings we said that you were using a very tiny map well okay somehow that 735 kilobytes did not register with me that is smaller than what a single photo is in many instances. Oh. So you're not really backing up anything on OneDrive. So you are connected now to an internet connection other than your cell phone. Is that right? Correct. Is it okay if we go look at your OneDrive account and see what's actually in there? Sure. Okay. So we can view it online. We could also view it on your local hard drive. I kind of feel attracted to viewing it online in this instance. We probably will wind up looking at it on your local drive too. So here in my files, there's... there's it almost oh, showed some, something. Something started coming up. Yeah, almost something came up. <clears throat> Click on the X to close these two. Yeah, here's a, a, an Excel worksheet, a, a OneNote notebook. Um, in my files, there's a documents folder and a pictures folder, but this documents folder looks like it only has two items. And yeah, it's, it's not, if I have two. anything, it's very small. Yeah, yeah. And the pictures folder is indicating it's got one item. Uh, it's, which is a folder, and uh, that's a screenshots folder, and there's nothing in it. So this this really is confirming the size that we were seeing. Is there's not much at all in here. Well, the, I'm I'm getting really confused now because I'm pulling a lot of my pictures off of the iCloud, and is that iCloud different than OneDrive? Yes, that is okay. different. Okay. Well, OneDrive is a Microsoft product. iCloud is an Apple product. Okay. Now, 
we, we've got your OneDrive folder online open here. If I come back to your Windows File Explorer, and then go into the Users folder, into your Profile folder, which is Stan, then there's a folder in here called OneDrive. Oh. I double click on that. Here I should be seeing the same files and folders that we just saw in your OneDrive cloud. Okay. These ones with the check marks indicate that everything that's in the cloud is actually also on your hard drive. These ones with the outline of the cloud are indicating that the contents of that folder do not exist on your computer, but they will be downloaded when you try to access them. Now this one has a check mark, which means it is on your computer, but it's just a shortcut. It's not an actual file anyway. Okay. And then, uh, pictures folder, I think we already said there's nothing in there. Come back to OneDrive. And then here's that Excel worksheet. So that Excel worksheet that you last worked on January 9th, mm -hmm. 2021, it is stored in the cloud. And this is just a shortcut here. So if you were disconnected from the internet right now, and you tried to open that, it would you would not be able to open it. Okay. Okay. And then this this one is an Excel worksheet that apparently is a picture list. In your circumstance, it doesn't make any sense for you to have these outlined clouds, meaning you have plenty of room on your local hard drive to store stuff. Yeah you don't have a lot of room in your cloud account. So it seems to make more sense to me that you should have these files on your computer and not just these shortcuts. I would agree to that, yeah. Okay, so the way we do that is come down to your OneDrive icon in the system tray, right click on it, and then choose settings and then go to the settings tab. And this check mark right here is what does that. This check mark is in the, is, the check mark is there, which mm -hmm. means you're configured to save space and download files as you use them. Oh, okay. Which means the files are only in the, in cloud, the cloud, only in the, uh, only in the cloud, except for the ones that have previously been downloaded to your computer. And eventually, files that have been downloaded to your computer because you've recently accessed them, they'll eventually lose their green check mark and go back to the outline cloud. When we remove this check mark, we expect to see these clouds change to green check marks. Okay. Okay. And it's probably going to go pretty quick, but we might see some updating indicator down here on the OneDrive icon. Okay. So here we go. Removing yes, let's go. The check mark. And then it wants a confirmation of that. We're disabling files on demand. Okay. So if you haven't if you haven't come across that phrase before. That's strange. It's a yeah, it's a little hard to grasp on. We're disabling files on demand, which means we're gonna have files available all the time. Yeah. <laughs> on demand. But not from the cloud. Yeah, that's yeah. confusing. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of the verbiage in this OneDrive that is confusing. So clicking OK, see how quickly those clouds turn into check marks. And then I'll click OK here. I don't think anything has started happening yet until I click OK here. And let's see, where'd the cloud go? There it gets up, up on here. top. We have things happening up here. Mm -hmm. We still see those cloud outlines. We see something happening. We got, oh, green check marks over here on the left. Okay. And yeah. the middle status area is gone now. Yeah, that just disappeared completely. And that's another weird, inconsistent, confusing thing, the way that it, 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 it does that. I suppose it might be that if they did just green check marks over here, then that doesn't give you a clue about the status of that save space and 
download files when needed, however that was worded, which yeah. implies that if I were to open this screen and see these check marks over here, I could know without looking that that check mark in that setting screen is not there mm. because you're not using files on demand. Man, I just, I get confused just speaking that out loud. That's a brain twister. So does that mean my computer is not backed up on the OneDrive? Yes, that is what that means. And I don't have enough OneDrive to do a backup. Right. You're using the free Microsoft account, which, uh, which provides five gigabytes of OneDrive space. If you were to subscribe to their lowest level plan, then I, th I want to say that it's, I don't want to say really, I want to go look. <laughs> uh, we saw that open your OneDrive. Oh, view online was where it showed that to us. It popped up an advertisement telling us how much it would cost you per month to have a premium account. I don't know if it's all over here. It says go premium. Here it is. Get one terabyte of storage and the latest apps for PC or Mac. That's actually not the one we're interested in. This I clicked on go premium so that we can see the plans. Mm -hmm. And here's the plans. So here's Microsoft 365 Family, Microsoft 365 Personal, and OneDrive only. So if you only were looking for more OneDrive space, this would be 100 gigabytes total. You're currently at five gigabytes total. And this would cost $2 a month. Oh, <clears throat> okay. All right, so let's, I'm gonna minimize that. And let's consider, actually we did already see that. We, this is really convenient place. So I'll go back here to the OneDrive Cloud and Settings and Backup, Manage Backup. This shows us how much space that you would need. So that $2 a month was gonna give you 100 gigabytes. So you look at this 10 gigabytes, 13 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes would be plenty. Uh-huh. Okay, but you already have iCloud. Yes. How much iCloud space do you have? We, uh, can, we can go look, I bet. I don't see an iCloud icon. How are you getting to your iCloud? You go if ahead you and drive. If you go, okay. You go, you go ahead and drive. Tell us what you're doing. Okay, I'm going to the internet. Uh, I don't know what you call this one. Google, Google, Chrome. Google Chrome. And up on top of Google Chrome, there is, oh, let's just open up a whole new window here. And I have an iCloud button here. All right. And I have an iCloud button up on top here. All right. So that's how I get to my iCloud. All right. Let's click on this one down here and it should go into it. And uh, on my cell phone, it automatically uploads my photos and, re and, and videos to photos in the iCloud. Okay. So, sir, so far, this is the only thing I've been using is the, the pictures or photos. Okay. I haven't been using any of these other guys around here. Okay. Let's take, uh, let me have the mouse. You got it. So, I'm going to go up here and click on account settings. And before I do that, I'm going to blur the screen because I'm not totally sure what we're going to come into here. Avoid exposing anything private. Okay. Yeah, I have no idea where we're going, but yeah, yeah. good idea. Okay, so here I'm going to bring you back on, on screen. So this is what I thought we would be finding. You have a total of two terabytes of iCloud storage. Okay. 
The hard drive on your computer has a total size of one terabyte and you have 1.78 terabyte available. Okay. So this graph all the way across here indicates your total available space and this part down here is what you're using. What's the when colored I, ones mean? When I float the mouse over the yellow section, it gives us that bubble pop-up that says photos and videos are 216 gigabytes. Okay. I flip the mouse over the blue, purple, whatever that is. It says backup. So that would be a backup for your iPhone. Oh, okay. Okay. That sounds that sounds good. Or that sounds what's been happening. All right. This orange one is documents. Okay. 136 megabytes. From the iPhone or from the computer? From the iPhone. Okay. And then this green one is messages. At eight and a half gigabytes, so messages, text messages. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe voice messages. Not. Oh, much. so down below it tells me the devices that it's backing up is the That's iPad right. and the iPhone. Right. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. But it doesn't have the computer on there. No, not yet anyway. <laughs> Since you have so much space, I'm interested in considering. Me too. You back up your PC to your iCloud account. Sounds sounds like an idea. I don't recall that I've ever explored that. Um, manage access then. Store contacts. Uh, family sharing to manage your family sharing. Uh, da, da, da. Apple ID manage, iCloud settings, mail contacts. Well, iCloud Drive would be the way to do that. Let's see what happens. I'm going to blur the screen again before going into iCloud Drive. So I did a single left click on that. Downloads, numbers, pages, shortcuts. So downloads is for downloading things through an internet browser. And there's some kind of a social security related there and we're still blurred. Numbers is uh, the, the software on an iPhone or iPad that's like a spreadsheet. Yeah. And it looks like you've used those sometime yes, in the past. I have. So you have an awareness that you can do a spreadsheet type of application on one of those devices. Um, pages is, uh, it looks like you've done some checklist things. Yes. Using that. And shortcuts. Okay. So not much in there at all. Now I know that we can have an iCloud Drive icon in your system tray uh, because I use that to access photos and such from my PC, but I don't use that for backup of the PC and that would be a really useful idea for you we are we are we haven't touched the intended subject of what we were going to do today it's true <laughs> it's definitely true <laughs> it's strange how things can um, migrate over to something else yeah but it's something I really want to do, too. I'm, I'm really interested in this. Meaning the direction we're going now? Correct. Oh, okay. Not the part that we're ignoring? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's secondary now. All right. Actually, the first the, the first thing that we were going to do is, is a backup, kind of, of the whole computer. Yeah. yeah. And that's what this is doing, too. Well, so. if we wind up doing that, and... Um, uh, when we first started going down this road, I was at least of the impression that your computer was currently being backed up 
to uh, OneDrive. And I got to punch a button here to guess. Unblurred. I had a blurred longer than I intended. So um, if we wind up using iCloud for your backup, for your cloud backup, then we're also interested in this external drive and what is its function in life. Um, one of the thoughts that I had as we were um, approaching today's session is that you didn't have enough room on your local hard drive for all of your files and oh. that they were sitting out there in your OneDrive account and you found that you didn't have access to them when you're away from the internet. I was, I was assuming, anticipating that's yeah. what was going on and it's not. No. Mm -mm. Uh, let me, let me give you a little bit more information on that. Sure. Some of the, I, I'm on a lot of YouTube uh, channels, not on them, but I watch a lot of YouTube channels. Yeah. And by the way, this, this back here is, is my, I'm in my van. So I'm meandering around the country in a van. Okay. And this is my home. So in my home, you know, I'm, I'm living it. But uh, in the other YouTube uh, channels that I watch, I, I saw some of, uh, a number of them uh, show a drive. And they say, this is 1987. This is 1988. This is 1989. And they just kept on going through there. And I'm thinking, well, I can organize my years or even my months on a drive, I think, better than, well, I know I can on the computer, but on the iCloud, iCloud? OneDrive? Well, even on OneDrive or iCloud. Or iCloud. I don't think I can uh, as easy as I could on this while I'm not connected to the internet. Right. So I can, I can sit around in a campsite and play around with organizing all of my photos and all of my documents uh, on, on a drive and even on the computer drive uh, just to take out time. <laughs> That's my intent. Okay. Uh, before I forget, I, 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 since you brought up the idea and you, and you told about the other YouTubers that are holding up these drives referencing different years, an SSD drive is not a good choice for that. Okay. An SSD drive is storing data electrically with some similarity to a battery Whereas a spinning hard drive, which is the same exact physical di dimensions, stores information magnetically. And the magnetism lasts longer than the battery charge does. So an SSD drive needs to be plugged into electricity peri periodically in order to maintain its files. And I'm recently s saw a presentation that from a from a respected authority that wasn't sure how long that interval should be. Meaning, it, they, it's, it's probably in terms of multiple years. I said, were they guess? Would they guess at an in interval? Um, they I they were hinting that they wouldn't want to let an important SSD drive be without power more than a few months at a time. Okay. So if you had a box of these SSD drives and you expect five years from now, you can pull any one of them out and access the files, you might be disappointed. Well, these drives that these YouTubers were showing me did not look like uh, an SSD, if that's what you're saying, SSD, yeah, solid state yeah. drive. They looked more like a... Uh, a uh, physical hard drive or a, a what do you call it a spinning drive okay were they the same dimensions as no. those mm -mm. they were bigger okay. they were much bigger and oh. then some of them just had a uh, what i call thumb drive yeah. those are those little things you just plug in right 
So right. I don't know. If, do those do those have a expiration date? Yes. It's not actually a date, but they are storing data the same way that an SSD drive does. Okay. Because they're, they are essentially memory chips that are storing an electrical charge. Now, the, the drives that you're describing, if they were in a little bit bigger size, they were probably the same two and a half inch drive inside of an enclosure. Yeah, I think a, so. Essentially a case. Mm -hmm. And that's very common. You can buy an external hard drive and it's basically in a case and it has a different kind of a USB cable than what you showed there. That adapter that you showed us is designed to be able to be used on an internal hard drive or internal SSD drive that is not currently installed inside of a computer. Okay. That, okay. that could be why I don't, I can't see the screen, but that could be why there looks like a, a few screw holes right. here that you tighten it down on a hard, on a motherboard. Yeah, inside a computer. Inside or, a computer. Or, or yeah. in, a, in a laptop <clears throat> or a desktop. Okay. A tower computer. Okay, so let's get back on track. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Coming back to your computer, I saw that on this main uh, screen here. Are you using the mouse right now? No. Okay. Yeah, it's jumping all around on me. Uh, it, it. I could be wiggling on this. Let me put it. Let me put my mouse in a different spot that when I wiggle, it won't move. Oh, okay. Is that better? Uh, oh, yeah. I think so. The other thing is I'm in my van, so when I wiggle in my van, it rocks. So All right. when my van is rocking, don't come a-knocking. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to touch that one. You um, found that? Okay. That's, that's supposed to be some humor. <laughs> yes. So I scroll down to the bottom here. In the bottom right area, there's a download iCloud for Windows. Now I've got to move... I got to move some of this picture in picture stuff out of the way here. So, so now that the viewers can see this, download iCloud for Windows. With iCloud for Windows, you'll have your photos, videos, mail, calendar files, other important information on the go and on your Windows PC. So, download or learn more. So, I clicked on download or learn more. Download iCloud for Windows. With iCloud for Windows, you have your folders. Yeah, we read that. Download iCloud for Windows from the Microsoft Store. Here's what you need. PC, Microsoft Surface up to date, latest version of Windows 10. Do you have your Apple ID and password available? Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm going to click on this link that says download iCloud for Windows from the Microsoft Store. Sign me up. Stay informed about special deals. Now, this is a little sly, tricky thing. You might be thinking we need to put in your email address and sign up in order to do what we're trying to do. Do we? So this is for the Microsoft Store. If I just click on the X, can we skip this piece? Yes, we did. So we don't have to sign up. So here's the iCloud for Windows. And down below it gives, looks like, even more information. iCloud Drive. Safely store and access all your files. Share any folder with friends. Save space on your PC by keeping your files in the iCloud Drive. So yes, this sounds like it's going to do what we were trying to accomplish. But that one comment you said, save space. I don't need to save space. So is it possible mm -hmm. to have it on both? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that was just, they, that was save space on your PC by keeping your files in the cloud or choose specific files and folders that you want to access even when offline. Okay. In your case, that's going to be everything. Yep. Okay.
Okay, and then we'll click this Get button. Always allow Microsoft.com to open links of this type. Uh, I'm just going to open Microsoft Store. Oh, we're not at the Microsoft Store yet? I might already have uh, settings that it'll automatically log in. Maybe. Right. Maybe not. We'll see. So here, apparently now we're at the Microsoft Store. We're seeing basically the same blurbs. And I we'll can get button again. I already have an iCloud account. So is it yeah, trying to say is, we need another I account, iCloud no, account? No, this is just downloading the iCloud for Windows. Oh, okay. Okay. So here's downloading up here. We see some numbers moving. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, Doug. My computer goes a little bit slow. I, no, actually, it's it's doing fine. I was noticing it's like 25, 28 megabits per second. That's plenty respectful. Okay. Respectable. Okay, this product is installed. It says right there. Oh, where, where, and where, where, where? Then right oh, launch. Here. Okay, okay, I see it. Upper left. Okay. Okay. There is a launch button. I'm looking at your taskbar at the bottom. We don't have an icon down there yet. And then there's this ellipsis menu. I'm clicking on that. Oh, pin to start. No, let's just click launch and see what we get. Getting things ready. Allow changes, yes. There's the cloud down here, just popped up. Oh, okay. So anytime I want my iCloud, I can click on that now? Instead I, of going through the internet? Yes, yes. Yes, we'll get and we'll demonstrate that. So here I want your Apple ID and password, and I'm gonna blur the screen there. Okay. I'm sure it's not gonna, your password's not gonna be visible anyway. Okay, uh, I'm pretty sure it's this number here. So let me see. Okay, and password. Sign in, I think, right? Yeah. Let's see what happens. See if I got the right uh, screen up. Nope. Okay. It's probably changed to this other one. I don't think it's going to be that one. I think I'm seeing that we have somebody watching live. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to say hello in the chat, go ahead. I'll say hello back to you. We're a young channel here. Don't get live viewers very often. Let's 
Let's try this this password. Oops, that's not right. Got to hit the right key to make it work right. Yeah, computer should be smart enough to know what you meant. This one's confusing me. It might not, this one might not work. Nope. Sometimes these confuse me. <laughs> Should be the same as your Apple account, possibly what you might be thinking of as your cell phone account. Okay. And actually we could see on your, since we're signed in to your iCloud account in your computer remembers that we should be able to go look that up through your browser. Oh, okay. Shall we do that? Yeah, go give that a try. Okay, so I'm going to be, I, I, I'm going to try to show some of these um, screens and stop at the right place. So I'm going to cancel this yeah. login window there and bring your computer back on screen. And then, uh, let's see, the browser that we're using here is, what, Google Chrome. So I'm going to click on the kebab menu up here in the upper right. It's those three dots stacked on top of each other. Okay. And I'm going to blur the screen each time I'm about to click on something because I'm not sure where we're going to expose something private. And then i uh, uh, got this on screen again. Come down to Settings. And then click on that. <clears throat> oh, I see Mike Perrot in again. Hello there. And uh, Mike, the guy that I'm helping is my brother, Stan. Hello. And uh, Mike was uh, jumped in on, with us on a live session, I think uh, two or three days ago. So then, uh, sync into two services. Let's see, we got uh, this, this. Okay. I think where I went wrong is the uh, the name, the the uh, the account name. I didn't put that one in. Yeah, that's not. Th this is the account name for your Google account. Okay. Now, do you mind uh, if I expose that? Uh, no, I I don't mind that at all because I yeah. I use that all the time. I mean, yeah, that's, you already that's my email. That by showing us your business card, I think. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so that, that way I can show people where we're, where we're going. So th this is the screen that we got to after clicking settings. And then here's an option clicking password or an option for password. So I'm going to click on that and I'm uh, blurring the screen just before I click on that. And so now we're, we're on that screen. And here as I scroll up and down a little bit, we see a couple other email addresses you use. Okay. Do you consider any of those um, private that you don't want to display? No, I don't. Email addresses are okay. They're okay with you. Okay, yep. so then I'm going to go ahead and display this screen because it's really useful for people to see where to go in Google Chrome for this stuff. So as we scroll down, we see different websites that have remembered credentials. So we have a website name, we have a username, and in here we have a password. And we can't see the password right now, but once we click on the eyeball, it will expose the password. And in order to do that, when you click on the eyeball, you're probably going to be challenged with your Google password. So we're looking in here for Apple accounts. So I see the first one is IDMSA Apple, whatever that is, that might be what we need. And I'm just glancing through to see if we see anything else Apple, and we don't. Now, some people will have a much longer list. And up here in the upper right, there's a search password. So I clicked in that and now type Apple. 
and I have not pressed the enter key. I just typed Apple and then scroll down. We find that it shows us all of the ones that map, that have the word Apple. And there's only one. Okay. So that kind of confirms that that's the one that we're interested in. I'm going to blur the screen and then click on the eyeball. And that's the password that it yeah. has for your account and looks like that's what you tried. That's what I've been using, but I did not use the username correctly. I put oh. in I put in the past I I didn't use that that name there. So I oh, okay. I put in the, put in the wrong name. Okay. So let's go back and try this. Let's get back to the get cloud. We already got it. And here let's go down to the cloud right click and sign in yep okay so there put in your apple id that's right and i don't have the screen blurred at the moment because that's you've okay already displayed your that email address and when you type the password it's going to be uh yeah, then it's going to go to that dots huh dots, yeah okay here we go with the password okay that should do it let's see if i can hit sign in Okay, now it sent an ID number or yep. verification code okay. to your cell phone, and the screen is still not blurred because this is a one-time verification code. There's nothing anybody can do with this information. Okay, there it goes. Okay, do you want to send diagnostic usage information to Apple? I usually say no, don't send. I, I don't. just want to lighten the demands on your computer. Okay. And now we have check marks for which items you're going to um, synchronize between your computer and the iCloud. So you have two terabytes of storage. So these photos that, in your, that are in your iCloud Mm -hmm. And I deduce they're probably accessible from your phone and maybe your iPad also. Correct. By having this check mark here, that means these photos are going to be available directly on your computer as well. Cool. Okay. That's good because I'm tired of downloading them. Right. So that's what this is going to save is that there you, you take a picture with your phone and pretty quickly it'll show up on your computer without you doing anything to make that happen. That's a good thing happening. I hadn't <laughs> expected that to happen and I like that idea. Yeah, we weren't going to get that with OneDrive. I, I want to go take a look at account details over here. I'm going to blur the screen before clicking on that. And so we're fine there. We're unblurred. Get your Apple ID place to manage your ID, share iCloud analytics. No, we don't need to do that. Okay, that's fine. All right, so then we'll click apply. iCloud passwords, iCloud passwords extension for Chrome is required. Download the extension to automatically fill website passwords with your iCloud keychain. Um, interesting. iCloud password extension for Chrome required. Password extension for Chrome is required. That's... That doesn't sound... Seems, I don't understand it. That seems odd to me because Chrome already successfully logged you in to iCloud. If we're going to use the iCloud app on your computer... Does it capture all of my iPhone and iPad passwords? Is that what it's trying to tell me? 
Oh, I think... I am thinking this would let your iPhone have access to the credentials that you have stored in Chrome. Because what this says is download the extension to automatically fill website passwords with your iCloud keychain. Or, it, well, actually, it could be the other way. It could be giving Google Chrome access the, to the passwords that you have saved on your iPhone. That's what I'm thinking, but I don't know. Yeah, and it's disturbing that it says required. Yeah. It's really implying that this is required in order for us to have the iCloud app operational on your computer. Well, could it be that some of the bookmarks and uh, it's checkmarked there and maybe passwords that are checkmarked there is why it's saying required? Yes, yes, because we're saying here that we want to bring the passwords that are stored in your iCloud account to this computer. Yeah. And I'm guessing you don't care about that. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything to me either way, I don't think. Yeah, I don't, the only thing I'm concerned about is I like to keep computers such as the use case for yours slim. Ah, okay. Okay, because you're out on the road, you're using an iPhone for connection to the internet, we want to reduce the amount of stuff that it has running and is trying to do. And extensions in particular, I'd like to avoid unless we really need them. So let's try canceling this and removing that check mark for passwords. Oh, it's gone. Ah, there you go. That answers that as question. Soon as I canceled that, it automatically took that check mark off. Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. now, I'm going to try apply. Do you want to merge bookmarks with iCloud? So since we have bookmarks with Chrome here, this would be merging the bookmarks that you have on your iPhone with the bookmarks you have in Chrome. I'm guessing that's probably going to cause some duplication. Yeah. If, if, we, if we merge this, you might have some duplication or immediately, or it might recognize that they're the same and just give you one copy of each on your computer and on your phone. Um, it might give us some a chance to decide which bookmarks to keep when they do conflict with each other. Well, what's a, what's a you, bookmark? Help, help me out on that. What, what's a sure. bookmark? What's a, a bookmark? bookmark in Chrome is uh, it, otherwise known as a favorite. That's these. Are, uh, you've got them up on the top of your screen up here. Uh-huh. Those are bookmarks. Okay. You click on them and it takes you to a website. I'm guessing that you probably don't do much web browsing on your phone. No. Well, I do it, but it's different than what's in here. So... Backing it up is not. And on your iPhone, do you actually have the Chrome application? No. On your iPhone? It's, uh, what's it called? It's called something different. Safari? Yes. Safari is what you use. Okay. So that means your information on this computer will be uploaded and merged with the bookmarks. So I want to I want to cancel that because we don't need the bookmarks on this computer uploaded to iCloud. Now, I, I, I hesitate, you might have heard a hesitation in my voice because I got to think, well, now, wait a minute, is that a backup? But no, because you use a Google profile. I can tell that because up here in the upper right, I can see you actually have a photo okay. for your profile icon. So your Google bookmarks are all stored in your Google account online. 
Okay. So there's no need to back that up also in iCloud. So when I click cancel on this, what do you think that check mark's gonna automatically disappear? I think it is. Yeah. Is there anybody to take the other side of that bet? <laughs> Any other bets is around? Any bets? You don't have my bet. Ah, yeah. oh, look at there. there it's gone. All right. <laughs> Now when we click apply, is it going to ask us another question? Maybe. Here we go. While this is thinking, am I making any noise on my mic by moving no. around? No, okay. you're fine as far as I can tell. There's a trash truck that just went by. Did that mess anything up? I did not hear it. Okay, hey, good. Mike Paradin, if you're willing, how's the audio coming through from your point of view? Let's go ahead and type it in the chat window for me. Let's see, did this, is this done? You can access mail, contacts, calendar, and remember at iCloud.com. Um, yeah, but I don't see any reason why you'd want to. No, really. So let's dismiss that. Is it done? Yeah, I think it's done. And then okay. click close. And then let's go see what the status of the iCloud down here is. Okay, this has changed. Now here it says initializing, 840, 900 items pending. So this is the pending here in 970 is it's gonna download the photos to your computer. In 1060, okay. Yeah. So it's counting, it's figuring out how much to do. Figure out how many, how much. And then down here is the iCloud Drive updated one minute ago. We don't, I don't think you have much at all in the iCloud Drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once it starts downloading those, your computer's probably going to get slow. And I see uh, Mike has responded. He's saying that the audio is coming through good. Great. Thanks, Mike. Now... Let's come back here and right click on iCloud again. So I was looking to see, how about a left click on that icon? Does that give me anything? Looking to see if there's a pause. Open iCloud settings. I think that's gonna give us a browser tab probably. Ah, here we go. Uh, okay, so here's, for passwords, it's an approve button. We're not going to do that because we already decided we don't want that. And then photos, there's options for photos. Cloud photos, shared. I want both of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, not seeing anything there for pausing it. It might not go very aggressively on downloading those photos while we are active on the computer. I'm not sure if it's going Did to- Did that update to 2000? Is that what I saw on there? Uh, let's try that again. Yeah, over 2000. Okay. And climbing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm assuming, yes. Yeah. Now, where were we? We, uh, at some point, I think we, did we ever see how much space is being used in your iCloud for photos? I come back here yeah. to this icon, right click on it and do open iCloud photos right here. It's almost 2,600 on that count, but we should be able to. I think it was two terabytes, wasn't it on the iCloud? Of total space, Yeah. Not not in photos. Right. Oh. This was a portion of that. Yeah. But there was that graphic that, uh, oh, here it's actually showing us your iCloud. Oh, this is fun. See, we're actually looking on your on your hard drive now of, of your computer in a folder, folder called iCloud Photos. And we see all these photos with that outline of a cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and they're changing. Yeah. Or is it just updating? I think it's I think it's still counting. So we're over three thousand more. Okay. <laughs> so it's giving you 
the names of all of those photos. And all right, so that's what happened when I went to I open iCloud Photos is it opened that folder on your computer. So let's go to iCloud.com and expect to be able to see how many photos. I think when we saw that graphic, it showed us how much space was occupied by photos, but it, I don't recall that it told us the number of photos. Oh, uh, you're right. I don't remember either. And here's photos. I think in here we're probably going to see numbers. Got the screen blurred here since we're not totally sure what it's going to show us here, but I doubt that you have photos you're concerned about showing. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't think I have any per, any sensitive photos on here. Okay. Network unavailable or slow. So I'm going to go ahead and display that. iCloud Photos is taking longer to load than expected. Well, let's close some of these tabs. So I'm just clicking on the X on these tabs to close them. And here's the Microsoft Store that's still open. I'm going to close that. And here's the photos coming up. So here's a number. Here's a quantity of photos. It's 3,959. And 1,126 videos. Oh, yeah. Can't forget the videos, videos are a little bit bigger than oh, yes. photos. <laughs> All right. So let's minimize that so then right click down here and oh there it is 4100 41 so that's getting close it's items pending it means yeah, it sending a, over yeah it, it it wants to download that number of items it hasn't started downloading them yet okay uh let's see i want to go So if we add those two numbers together, we're going to be um, 5,815. 5,815? Yeah. Did you yep. do that right? Somewhere around there. And I've only been out here um, eight months. Well, I suspect that don't you have more I have. than just what you've done during that time? Yeah, I have. I do. Yep. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so while, while that's running, let's let's get on to our um, main topic. <laughs> main topic. You have that SSD We're, drive that you have an adapter. We've been an hour and 11 minutes into this thing, and we haven't gotten to the main topic yet. Uh <laughs> And we had no idea we were going to be going this direction. No, we did not. I did. So what we've done is the correct thing to do. Uh, it it appears. And so, your the the SSD drive that's in your laptop is plenty big to hold all of your files. Yeah. You described at one point in this conversation about using that external drive as a way of keeping track of individual years of activity. Um, I think that's kind of wasteful um, to dedicate one drive for each year because I don't think you're gonna nearly fill it. Oh, definitely, yeah. The you ones have... that the other guys have, they, they were much smaller than this. They, they okay. weren't 500 and well, what what I call this 500 gigabyte. 500 gigabyte. Yeah, they were they were much less than what this guy is. Yeah. So yeah, they, I could see they had they had to have multiple drives. I don't. 
Okay. I just wanted to subdirectory, put them in subdirectories that were more manageable than a whole long list of pictures and videos. Yeah. Well, that would be best done actually on your laptop. Okay. To do that management of folders within the pictures folder on your laptop and then let that synchronize to your iCloud account. The iCloud account provides your form of backup. That drive that you have, that SSD drive that you have in your hands with the adapter to connect to the computer, I think the most useful thing you could do with that is periodically create an image backup of your laptop. Oh, okay. And the purpose of that would be if the drive that's in your laptop goes bad, you've got an image backup of your laptop, which makes it a very a much easier to restore by just putting a new drive in your laptop and then restore the image. I like that idea. Yeah. I think that's a more productive use of that SSD drive. And since you would be doing periodic backups, that means it gets connected to power occasionally mm -hmm. uh, to keep its charge, its electrical ch charge fresh. Well, let me, let me try and play devil's advocate then. If I don't back it up in one in one month kind of thing and it loses its power, the next time I plug it in and do a backup or an image, would that restore the battery or the battery yes. lights and the power yes. and everything? Yes, that, that'll refresh the drive. Okay. And I'm, I'm sure it can go much longer than uh, much longer than one month. Yeah. Before it's on. Well, I was just trying to play with. But yeah, that's a point. That's a point. Now, the other thing is, let's suppose you <laughs> do the backup once and then you forget about doing backups to that for a year and then the hard drive in your laptop goes bad. Uh, then you find that backup and we use that backup to successfully restore to your laptop. Well, all of your subsequent data files, pictures and videos and such are stored in iCloud. They'll automatically just download after we've restored the operating system onto a new drive. Ah, okay. Okay. So what's the reason to periodically do a backup to the external hard drive if the only changes that are occurring are backed up to the cloud. I'm struggling mm. here mm -hmm. to come up with a reason to do it regularly, but bottom line is it's not any big crisis if you neglect it. Uh, well, the, the only crisis is it, once the battery is gone on True. the drive, does that mean I can't get to that. Yeah, so. we would not be able to um, uh, restore from that. And then even that, even then though, that's not a huge crisis. All it means is that we put a new drive into the laptop, install the Windows operating system, and then log into your iCloud account, install the iCloud app, and would download those files. We would have to reinstall any other programs that are on the computer. So mm -hmm. it's very convenient to be able to restore an image from an external drive like that. I think we want to do that in a separate video, though, to install the backup software. Okay. And uh, set it up for you to be able to do that. Now, let's get back and see where we're at with the computer. <laughs> it's not where I intended to go, but an hour and 17 minutes. Uh, we did get a lot of additional questions answered or located and answered. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. here this shows iCloud Photos updated four minutes ago. iCloud Drive updated 13 minutes ago, so we don't see any activity currently happening, which makes me think that it has not actually downloaded all of those photos to your computer. Indeed, that is the case. 
So these are stored on your iCloud account and they'll download when you try to access them. That's not really what we want. We want them physically on your computer so that you can access them when you're not connected to the internet. Exactly. Right? Yep. So with the mouse floated over that one video file right there, the, the last line says availability status available when online. I'm Where are you at? I can't find you. Oh. oh, there you are on the left? Yeah, on the left side. So okay. here again, I'll float over that. Okay. Do you see that on the left side? Oh, yes. Okay, I got it. Okay. So I'm going to right-click on iCloud Photos, and I'm exploring around. Oh, here's this. See this? Always keep on this device. Okay. So there's no check mark next to it. I suspect when I click on this, it's going to give us a check mark there. And things are going to start downloading, and these outlined clouds will change to solid clouds eventually. So here's a click, and uh, there it goes. Applying properties. That's just applying the properties to 5,267 items. And then on this iCloud icon down in the system tray, I anticipate we're going to see that it's indicates that there's some work being done. Didn't quite make it to the other does. Yeah, see some green check marks appearing? Yes. Yeah, and some of these refresh arrows, the double arrows. Yeah. Indicating those files are refreshing. When I float the mouse over the iCloud icon, doesn't tell me anything there. I'm going to left click on it. And here it says downloading 5,000 items. And if I right click on that, it's the same thing. So it's going to take a while for it to do all of that. It scrolls down a long way, so we see a lot of things that don't have green check marks yet. Yeah, some of them aren't even cloud part. They're just refreshing things. Yeah, actually, for, none uh, of them show that outline cloud anymore because we changed that setting. Okay. The outline, the outline cloud apparently only appears when you don't have that check mark over here. Okay. Say so we do have a check mark now since we have selected that, but. When there was no check mark there, this line said always keep on this device. Well, that's kind of ambiguous because you might not know that there has to be a check mark there for this statement to be true. Yeah. You could look at that and say, oh, well, they're always on this device then because that's what it says right there. Always keep on this device. But you don't know that it's supposed to have a check mark there if you actually want that. Yeah. Okay. I think we're about ready to wrap this up, don't you? Me too. Yeah, you don't need to be online for all the rest of this to load. It's right. just, uh, I think we've accomplished uh, uh, an area that we that we discovered that needed to be done and did it. And then, like you say, this part here is going to be done later. <laughs> yeah. Another video. <laughs> I... I, I I think we accomplished your intention, but we did not accomplish what we declared we were going to do. There you go. That's stated even better yet. <laughs> All right. So, Doug, All right. Uh, thank you very much. That was that was uh, that was over the top, better <laughs> than I expected. All right. Very good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end your zoom uh, attachment on your behalf and then I'll do my little wrap-up spiel okay all right so goodbye Stan okay bye Doug have a good day bye bye all right there that goes and we're done so uh boy summaries what we did there um, we, we did not do what we thought we were going to do, but the purpose was to 
get him a functional backup, access to files when he needs them. We actually found a better solution than what we were intending to do. And we've redesigned essentially the purpose of his external drive, which we'll do in another session. We'll set up a image backup capability on that external drive. I think that's gonna work much better for him than what we originally thought we were going to do. So um, the function of my YouTube channel is to provide free computer support to people by virtue of connecting through Zoom and connecting remotely to your computer. If you'd like to request a session, send an email to the address that's on your screen right now, dougbetts at livewindowstraining.com. Give me an idea in the body of the email which you'd like to have help with and we'll put it together. So I hope this has been uh, useful to you. Have a great day. Catch you later.